So the next thing we need to cover is the idea of conservative vector fields and integrating a conservative vector field over a curve. So we've previously talked about how we can integrate any vector field over any curve. And we had a general formula for how we would do that. Uh, if we wanted to integrate a vector field over a curve with respect to that curve, uh, we could parametrize everything and use this formula where we evaluate the vector field over the curve. So f of r of t dot r prime of t dt from t equals a to t equals b. Now this formula works nicely for any vector field over any curve as long as the curve itself isn't too complicated, the vector field isn't too complicated. When uh, you know the curve starts to become more complex or the vector field starts to become more complex, this formula can tend to be fairly cumbersome in terms of creating an integral that's very difficult to do. And so we want to come up with other options here. So one other option is if our vector field is conservative. And so if our vector field is conservative, we can use what we call the fundamental theorem for conservative vector fields. Before I do that, I want to talk about real quick uh, just some terminology. A closed curve okay, is a curve where it has the same starting and ending point. Uh, so it makes a loop. If we integrate over a closed curve, a vector field over a closed curve, we use this symbol right here just to show that the curve itself is looped from start to end. Okay? And if we're integrating a vector field over a curve, so we're converting this scale, this vector line integral of f over that closed curve, we could also use the terminology of calculating the circulation. So we talked about work done by force, we talked about vector line integral. Uh, circulation is another term we use to integrate vector fields over curves, but only if the curve is a closed curve. Right. So now let's get back to the idea of the fundamental theorem for conservative vector fields. So we've already talked about conservative vector fields, how to determine if a vector field is conservative, how to find the potential function if it is conservative. And we've done a lot of the legwork already for how this theorem is going to be applied. So we assume a vector field is conservative, right? So there is some function that we found the gradient of that created this vector field. And so what we want to do is we want to find this potential function f, okay? And we know how to do that. We've already done that um, in previous lessons. So what this says is that if C is a path from point P to point Q and f is a conservative vector field, then if we're going to try and integrate that vector field over that curve, all we really have to do is find the potential function f and evaluate f at point q, which is the ending point, at point p, which is the starting point, and subtract those values. This looks a lot like the fundamental theorem of calculus that you learned in calculus one, which is why they call this the fundamental theorem of conservative vector fields, because it's largely the same. You know, we find the antiderivative of the vector field, essentially, you know, that's what the potential function can be thought of as. And then we evaluate that antiderivative of that potential function at the endpoints of the curve. Now, the bonus to this is that we could have a very complicated curve, okay? Let's say this is the curve we're trying to integrate over. All we need to know is the starting point and the ending point. What happens in between is irrelevant because f is path independent if it's conservative. All that matters is the starting and end points. That's all we plug in. As far as the curve goes, all we plug in is the starting points and the ending points. And so that's how we can calculate the same thing we've been calculating in a previous lesson, which is the vector line integral or work done by force. But if it's conservative, we can do this. Now, if P and Q happen to be the same point, we have a closed curve, okay? So P equals Q, then this and this will be the same, and therefore the integral would be zero. So the circulation around the closed path, if F is conservative, will always be zero. 
If it's not conservative, that's not necessarily the case, but if it is conservative, the integration of the circulation would be zero. So let's see an example. So let F be your vector field defined as 2xy plus z, x squared and x, and evaluate this vector field over the curve where the curve is a path that goes from point 1, negative 1, 2, and 2, 2, 3. Now, we have two ways we could get this done. If it's conservative, we can use that fundamental theorem. If it's not conservative, we can go back and use the original formula we had. However, that formula is dependent on us knowing the curve and parametrizing the curve with a vector valued function. Well, we don't know anything about the curve other than where it starts and where it ends, so that's really not an option. So this better be conservative, otherwise we can't do this problem. So how do we determine if it's conservative? We gotta check the cross partials. So we need to see that the partial of F1 with respect to Y equals the partial of F2 with respect to X. We need to see that the partial of F2 with respect to Z equals the partial of F3 with respect to Y. And the partial of F1 with respect to Z has to equal the partial of F3 with respect to X. So F1 with respect to Y would be 2X. F2 with respect to X would be 2X, so that works. F2 with respect to Z would be 0. F3 with respect to Y would be 0, so that works. F1 with respect to Z would be 1. And F3 with respect to X would be 1. So it works. We are conservative. Excellent. So what are we going to do? We're going to find a potential function. And then we're going to evaluate it between these points. And we will get our answer. So potential function, how do we find it? We have to integrate 2xy plus z with respect to x. But we should also integrate x squared with respect to y and integrate x with respect to z. And they should all equal each other, which should equal this function we're trying to build. Okay? So 2xy plus z with respect to x. That's going to give me x squared y plus xz plus some function of y and z that we treated like a constant. x squared with respect to y would be x squared y plus some function of x and z that we treated like a constant. And x with respect to z would be xz plus some function of x and y that we treated like a constant. Putting all that together, we see that our potential function is simply going to be x squared y plus xz plus possibly a constant, a true constant um, value because any derivative we would do would make that zero out. Um, but we're not going to need that plus c anyway because it'll cancel itself out when we subtract the endpoints. It's just like the fundamental theorem of calculus in Calc 1. You stopped writing the plus c when you did definite integrals because they cancel each other. So if we want to integrate this vector field with respect to the curve, we find the potential function, which we just did, and then we're going to evaluate it from 1, negative 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3. In which case we get, plug in 2, 2, 3, you're going to get 4 times 2 plus 2 times 3 minus plug in this one into here. Where we always start at the ending, then go to the beginning. From 2, start with the with the two go to the from uh so negative what do we get negative one and then we're gonna get uh plus two so ultimately we're gonna get eight plus six minus one so 13. so there you go that is the integral of this vector field over curve the answer is 13. did it a very different way than we did in the past but that's because it's conservative 
having that pop that property of being conservative allows us to find a potential function and evaluate it. We didn't even know what the curve looked like. It could be anything between P and Q, and we would still get the same answer. So that works out very nicely. All right, here's another one. So determine if this vector field, F, is conservative. If so, find the potential function. And then we'll evaluate the vector line integral, which means integrate this vector field over a curve where the curve goes from 1, 0, 2 to 2, 1, 3. Now this problem through the directions essentially leads you through how to do this problem. That's not always going to be the case. Not every problem is going to say, this is how you do it. Most of them are just going to say, evaluate this vector field over this curve, and you're going to have to decide which is the best way to go about it. So should I use my conservative vector field theorem? Should I um, use the original theorem that we had? And it depends. It depends on the problem and what seems to be the best way. If it's conservative, though, we can use the conservative vector field formula. Theorem, I should say. Um, so let's check to see if it's conservative. So we got to look at these three pieces of this vector field, three components, and check our cross partials. So F1 with respect to Y has to equal F2 with respect to X. So in this case, F2. 1 with respect to y would be 2x, f2 with respect to x would be 2x, so that works. So then f2 with respect to z has to equal f3 with respect to y. Does that work? Well, f2 with respect to z, there's no z, so 0. Oh, I changed colors on you. 0. And f3 with respect to y, there's no y, so that would be 0. And finally, partial of f3 with respect to x has to equal the partial of f1 with respect to z. Uh, well, f3 with respect to x would be negative 1. f1 with respect to z would be negative 1, so that holds. So yes, this is conservative. Okay, then, then we need to find the potential function. So we have the integral of 2xy minus z with respect to x has to equal the integral of x squared plus 2y with respect to y has to equal the integral of 1 minus x with respect to z. And that should give me what the potential function is that I'm looking for. And so 2xy would be, with respect to x, would be x squared y, x squared y minus uh, xz plus some function of y and z that we have a constant uh, x squared y plus y squared plus um, some function of x and z that we have a constant and finally the last one would be z minus xz plus, again, another function of x and y that we held constant. All right, so putting this all together, we get a potential function of x squared y minus xz plus y squared plus z. So x squared y minus xz plus y squared plus z. And so if we wanted to integrate this vector field over the curve with respect to the arc length, we would find that potential function, which we did already. That's really where the work comes in. And evaluate it from 1, 0, 2 to 2, 1, 3. So plugging them in, plug 2, 1, 3 in for x, y, and z first. So we're going to get 4 times uh, 1 minus 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 squared plus 3. Then we're going to subtract. We're having to plug in 1, 0, 2. So 1, 0, 2, we plug in 1. Um, we're going to get... 
one, zero, two, we're going to get, uh, sorry, zero. Then we're going to get minus two. Then we're going to get zero. And then we're going to get three. So what do we end up with? We end up with four times uh, four minus six is minus two, minus two and another four is two. And this ends up being um, one. So we get one. There you go. So integrating the vector field over the curve is really that simple. Okay? Um, we, we plug in these values and we get um, the integral.